Right, uh, well today we're going to do an extremely important uh, area. It's almost like the core of security on, on the internet. And unfortunately, it's probably one of the least understood areas in the whole of, of the industry. So it's a fairly complex thing that we'll look at, but it's so fundamentally important. It is thought that a breach of your trust infrastructure is one of the most expensive things that a company can cope with from a security point of view. I think I saw a survey, something like $150 million to mitigate against a breach of your trust infrastructure. So that can involve losing your private key, for it to be stolen, uh, and so on. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see the importance of what's called PKI, or the public key infrastructure. <laughs> Many would see it as quite flawed in, in what it does, uh, but it's there, and it at least is a sticking plaster on our security on, on the internet. Next week we'll do tunnels, and we'll do SSL, TLS, so it will all start to make sense where these certificates actually fit in and how important uh, it, it is. So what's been in the news this week from a crypto point of view? Anybody seen anything? Firefox. Firefox. Yeah, yeah. So it's a real flaw. DNS is fundamentally flawed as a protocol. For one, if your DNS, the infrastructure goes down, then everything <laughs> collapses on, on your network. Uh, the other thing is that uh, an adversary can install a DNS uh, lookup on your, your machine in the etc. hosts table. If someone manages to get onto your machine, you do a lookup on google.com and it'll go to the wrong place. So the credibility of the service is really very low. Along with that, someone can set up a, an adversarial. Uh, if they get your uh, DHCP settings, they can point to their uh, uh, DNS uh, service. And we worry because the top level of the internet, the DNS, if that was to be compromised in some way or poisoned, then it could collapse the whole of the, the internet. So everybody knows that it has a problem and there is very little trust and security in there. Hopefully, DNSSEC will come along, <laughs> but somebody lost the keys, unfortunately, for the first enemy that was meant to happen. So we will get trusted, trusted uh, servers signing for uh, DNS uh, uh, requests. But now DNS itself is open. So anybody who's sniffing the network traffic can see all the DNS uh, requests. Uh, obviously, when you're in a Wi-Fi network, can you see someone else's DNS? So if you were sitting in Starbucks and you had Wireshark on, can you see someone else's DNS? No. <laughs> Starbucks can. <laughs> Whoever is on the other end. Every single connection on Wi-Fi is encrypted and, and tunneled. The old days of web <laughs> are gone. In the days of web, it was a broadcast key and a single key for the whole network. Somebody who could get that key could listen to all the, the traffic. But obviously, once it's off the Wi-Fi, then it's into the normal network, and whoever's sniffing the traffic after the Wi-Fi point, even if they're on the Wi-Fi router, can now see the DNS uh, requests. Along with that, there are problems with uh, some of the IP and TCP details that will reveal uh, these, these DNS parameters. So hopefully that, that's it's a short-term fix, but at least we can now tunnel, uh, because a, a standard way uh, that someone can actually spy on what you're, what you're doing at, looking at on the web, is to look at the DNS uh, request from the, from the network. So if there was five people in our network at home, can you think that, and you watch the DNS request, do you think you can pick off who it was that made that request on the network? 
do you think? No, you can't really, but possibly through behavioral analysis, you can pick off exactly, you know, when people are accessing the network, what kind of things they access and, and so on. So it's a kind of, uh, it's a bad protocol. Anything else that you saw? Uh, well, the ones I saw was that one. Uh, so there was a, a vulnerability on Wi-Fi called Crack. And Crack uh, uh, captured the four-way handshake. Whenever you pair with Wi-Fi, there's a four-way handshake and there's a bcrypt uh, hash in there. If the user has used a very weak password, as you know, bcrypt is still crackable, but it's going to take a while. So if it's in a dictionary, it doesn't take too much, even with a Raspberry Pi, to actually determine what the password is. So Wi-Fi WPA2 is bad. <laughs> and we need to migrate away towards uh, WPA3 as quickly as we can. So WP3 has like a Diffie-Hellman. <laughs> it has a proper key exchange. It doesn't have this four-way handshake. Uh, so this vulnerability was released and be worried if you have an Alexa device or a Samsung or anything <laughs> really because this new uh, vulnerability called Crook uh, has, uh, has, has shown that billions of devices in the standard Wi-Fi chipsets are, are vulnerable. So the, uh, the manufacturers have been informed, but it's not so easy to go and update a billion devices in an instance. An IoT device that's sitting on your shelf isn't going to be updated. Probably you've got to manually uh, do that. So I'll have a look at this demonstration here. It was done at the RSA conference uh, this week. And two, they tested on two core chipsets, Broadcom and uh, Cypress, which are probably a vast majority of, if you opened up your Alexa or your Samsung phone, you'll probably find those chips in there. And it affects both WP to personal, that's at home, and WP to Enterprise. <laughs> I don't know how scary that sounds, but virtually, or I will say many Wi-Fi access points, routers, are now vulnerable to this crack. And basically what happens is they reset the encryption key to all zeros. <laughs> that has an entropy of zero. Because <laughs> if you know something, there's no entropy in there. You don't have to try uh, anything. Uh, I've got a little <laughs> demo if you want to see. Uh, we, but we, uh, there's a nice little uh, 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 wi uh, antenna that you can buy uh, for your machine. Works, works very well. Only costs about fifteen pound or so on uh, we uh, on on Amazon. We put it on our Raspberry Pi, and if you can listen for the four-way handshake. Uh, then it is not too difficult to, to break that. So crack uh, was the previous one, and now uh, we see <coughs> crook, uh, and, and it's, uh, it can cause lots of, lots of uh, problems. Uh, the other one I saw was this one, and it will become more relevant uh, next week. So Cloudflare have detected uh, that TLS 1.3 on their network, TLS 1, oh, you're not seeing that, are you? <laughs> that TLS 1.3 is, is now more popular than TLS 1.2. Why do you think that's the case? Nobody told you about this. Maybe I'd, well, oh, the browsers, Chrome, and Firefox are driving the whole industry forward, hammering it even. Google are hammering the industry to get it, it, its act in gear. <laughs> so Firefox and Chrome have been pushing out uh, TLS uh, 1.3 and hopefully get rid of the problems of TLS uh, 1.2. Uh, next week, we'll go into more detail as to what the differences be between them and how they work. 
And then as you said, uh, we've got this DNS over HTTPS. So we, with HTTPS, we create a tunnel. Uh, we do a key exchange or we pass the, 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 uh, pub, uh, we, we pass the public key and do all that encryption stuff. So at least now, <coughs> a DNS can be, uh, can be tunneled so that someone listening to the traffic uh, doesn't actually hear them. And uh, Let's Encrypt has issued its billionth uh, certificate. So, <laughs> and it's free, as it should have always been. Companies were making fifty, a hundred dollars for. I, I reckon. I reckon it's one of the most profitable businesses in the world, is to make a digital certificate. So if anybody wants to make it, then I'll, I'll do it for ten dollars if you want. Uh, but to create a key pair, as we'll find, to create a certificate, to sign it, it was costing $50. Sometimes you were getting a certificate for about 20 years or something like that. I've got one that was 20, 39 or something like that. Apple, anybody hear about what Apple are doing with their certificates? They're only making them a year. Okay, <laughs> only making a year. So you don't buy certificates anymore, hopefully, that are... Uh, five years long, uh, and so on. And Let's Encrypt is almost like every month. Every month, your cert checks and see if it gets updated. So those, those are the, the, um, the kind of news items that, that I saw uh, this week. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, digital certificates today and what they are. And please stick, keep in your mind public key encryption here. Public key, key pair, public key, and private key. Okay, which one should I hide? It's private, public. Hide that one, and everybody can see my public key. So understand that it's all about this key pair. If I want to prove my identity, which one should I use? Which one? Public. Initially, when I want to <coughs> prove my identity, which one should I use? Sign with your private. Sign with private. So I sign with my private, <coughs> see a hash of it, and then I prove with my public, okay? So remember that. <laughs> Most of what we're doing here is to be able to sign something and then prove that I have the signer. When we come on to Bitcoin and, and uh, blockchain, you'll see how important that's your wallet. <laughs> That's your ID. <laughs> Lose that, and you've lost the ability to uh, to prove that you've made any transactions that you even own. That lose that to someone else, and they can pretend to be uh, you. So it's a really big uh, problem uh, that that we have. On the other on the other way, you can use my public key if you want and encrypt something, and then I'll use my private key. Okay. So just keep those two thoughts in your head, especially when we get to the test. <laughs> okay. uh, you will get asked about something like uh, that. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, uh, basic introduction, uh, some authentication methods. Uh, if there's a big industry in security, it's identity. <laughs> uh, we see companies growing fast. Uh, they're using Active Directory. They're looking at multi-factor authentication. It's a big thing on the internet and proving that RBS is RBS is a really important thing in this world. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll have a heads up on this. So look at PKI, the public key infrastructure uh, in a bit detail and how we can pass uh, certificates. Okay, so just to remind you every single week, <laughs> this is where we are. For the first test, we will be assessing these four units, okay? These four units will feed into this test uh, here, okay? The next units, seven, eight, uh, 10, 11, and so on, will feed into the, into the next uh, test, okay? So you can forget about what we're doing today, maybe before the test, uh, but please start to be studying for the test and doing the sample questions. Uh, you might not be finishing all of the labs. You've touched base with them. You're kind of okay with them. 
you've seen some of the concepts, that's okay. Uh, please now focus on doing your, stu your studying whenever you can on the bus, on the train, wherever you are. Just see if you can think through some of the, the answers. Does anybody have any questions on what's coming up uh, for the tests? So on Open Book, Moodle, Friday, that's it. Give you feedback. Okay, <laughs> and then second test here and third test, third, uh, the coursework. So the test here, we've locked down to the 1st of May, I think, the Friday uh, for that one. And then the coursework is in that last week. 30, 30, 40% is the, is the, the, uh, the balance of the marks uh, in, in them. Okay, be thinking about your coursework. What is the area? If you were to go for a job tomorrow, what area would you love to say, I did some work on lightweight crypto or tokenization or blockchain or something like that? You've got the opportunity to maybe at least look into it and, uh, and be knowledgeable, hopefully, in the area. Uh, for that. Okay, but we'll come back to the coursework lots of times from there. Right, so I've got a blank, <laughs> blank slide. Right then, so tell me all about digital certificates and how important they are. In your life, in the things that you do, how does a digital certificate get involved? Or doesn't it? It has nothing to do with anything that you do. Tell me where you see or where you think digital certificates arrive, do something that helps you. What's that? In Gmail? Explain. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's more to do with the web rather than the signing of the emails. We agree. Uh, we covered. Yeah, yeah. So it's more to do with that you are connecting to Gmail and not a fake uh, Gmail. So when we connect to Google and I think that a digital certificate will arrive. Everything is happening in the background. Okay, <laughs> it's all happening. All the magic happens to do the signers and do you really trust Google or Facebook? That's a human trust element. But from a digital trust point of view, uh, underneath the hood, something's happening in there. So when we connect to the web, uh, a certificate is passed and that certificate, we check it and we go, yeah, that looks uh, okay. Prove to me that you are Google. Okay, you have the private key and uh, here's the public key being passed. You sign something and I'll check that it is you and it's still you. Where else? Where else would you find it on your computer and why is it so important? I mean, it's so 100% important. If you get a breach on your machine now of your certificate infrastructure, then you are in big trouble uh, the Lenovo hack with Superfish, the developer put a key pair, the public and the private key, <laughs> in the install for the, um, it was like a backdoor <laughs> machine. As I think I've said before, it took one minute for something to crack. It was the name of the company who developed the backdoor in there. And they had the, uh, the private key, which allowed anybody to listen to any of the traffic <laughs> that, uh, that was sent. So where else would you see certificates? Where else are certificates important? Where is it? Secure file transfers. Secure file transfers, yeah, excellent. That's a very good uh, example. Give me an uh, example. So uh, SFTP is like a secure file transfer. Uh, SSH and so on allow us to make a remote connection. Again, within this, we create a, a, a certificate or a key pair at least, and we'll pass the certificate uh, from there. Anywhere else? In the web servers, yeah. So that's. Yeah. <coughs> 
If I want to put a back door on your machine, what would I have to do? I'm going to modify all the Microsoft DLLs that are on your machine. Well, they're all signed. All the DLLs are signed by Microsoft with Microsoft's private key. Okay, if you're an insider in Microsoft, whew, that private key is worth a lot of money. Because if somebody gets that, they can now write DLLs that look as if they've been signed by Microsoft. So if I can fake a certificate and don't ever allow a root certificate into your machine that you don't fundamentally trust, if I can trick you to install a root certificate, you are stuffed. <laughs> I can now install intermediate certificates. I can now install a certificate which will sign uh, for that, that entity. And it happened, RSA lost their private key. And then it was hunt, hunt every piece of software that had been signed by RSA. <laughs> I don't know how significant you might think that is, but it's basically shut down a whole large companies and find every single piece of software that has been signed by RSA because you can't trust it anymore. And <laughs> the best one, did anyone here hear about the PlayStation hack? Anybody? Any of the PlayStation? Can you remember what it was? I mean, I remember there being a huge breach. Oh, oh the, breach. there was the data breach, was but, the but, but there was all, uh, Sony have a long track record of, uh, of people cracking their, uh, uh, their the, the PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and to, to, to get around the licensing. And <laughs> uh, please don't quote me on this, but I think they signed with a private key of, uh, wait for it, four. <laughs> uh, have a think about it. Okay. It's meant to be a random number, your key. Okay. Uh, I think it was four. Uh, I'll check after this. They signed the Sony PlayStation image with a private key of four. Some would say four is a random number, you could say. <laughs> and you might debate that. Like I could come up with a random number of four, but if I keep coming up with a random number of four, then it's not random anymore. So somebody found out this key and were able to re-sign uh, the PlayStation image. I don't, I don't know if you know how, how big a hack that actually is, but it's massive. It allows anybody to, to have a cracked PlayStation and run unlicensed games and all, all that, that kind of thing and, and rebuild it. Uh, I'm sure it was four, four, there you go. Uh, there, are, there are Bitcoins around that are signed with a key of one. I think somebody must have went wrong somewhere and created a program. <laughs> what? Somebody's hoovered them up, it's too late. Somebody hoovered up all the private keys from one to, I don't know, 10,000. <laughs> they hoover, there was quite significant amounts of Bitcoin. <laughs> Somebody tried one, two, three, four, five, and you go, wow, that's, that takes some brain to, to think at, at that level. Uh, a Bitcoin address of one, just in case a developer had mucked up somewhere and hadn't created a random uh, Bitcoin uh, address. I think it's brilliant, uh, some, some minds. So your whole back end, if you're using Windows, if you're using uh, a Mac, even Linux, everything should be signed by uh, a vendor. All the DLLs and so on, somebody who uh, can fake that will be able to sign for that, that entity. And imagine the problems that if somebody got the Microsoft private key for signing DLLs we would have to all instantly update all of our, our infrastructure. We'd have to rekey everything. We'd have to, do you know what the word, the word is? When I want to take a certificate back, it's one of the biggest problems on the internet. It begins with R. Revoke. Revoke, yeah, that nasty word. Revoke. <laughs> Revoke, I need to tell everybody that my key isn't valid anymore. Revocation is a big problem. Do I create a big list, a 
blacklist? How do I trust that, that list? So revocation is a massive problem. How do I now take my key, keys back and define that they've been uh, uh, breached? And here's the new key, uh, by the way. Anything else? Most software has gone this way. So we're moving away from DLLs and EXEs. How is most software created these days? It begins with A. Well, app, nearly. Well, you got the second letter, right? <laughs> Third letter? API. API. Okay, most software these days is a RESTful API. Uh, I call a, I don't have to create DLLs in the libraries anymore. I call up your API, it does a facial recognition for me, it analyzes an image. The software is very lightweight. We use Python, say, for that. We can create very lightweight, RESTful web services that we can get to work. So that's the future world. But we've got to make sure that we're not connecting to a, a, a malicious API. <laughs> and developers often don't get this. Oh, so I just connect to Google and I'll do all that kind of thing and I'll do the password and all that, that sort of thing. So one of the biggest problems is not checking your API and that you're connecting to a valid uh, API and a valid service. You can take it down to the service level. So Google will have many services that they run. You need to get connected and sign and get a signature from the service that it is a valid service. And you need to revoke if somebody has, uh, <coughs> uh, has been hacked at, at that end. So increasingly we're moving to an API world and we need to make sure that we sign and it's through digital certificates and our key pairs that we actually do that. <coughs> okay, so then when you connect to the internet, that's what you see. It goes green or something and we get uh, <coughs> our, uh, we get our, our certificate. And uh, in here, we have the concept of, uh, of Trent. So Trent is VeriSign in this, in this case. We trust VeriSign because VeriSign are the top of the trust tree on, on, the, on the internet. We don't trust PayPal to say I'm PayPal, like I'm Spartacus. We trust, we only trust PayPal if they can prove that they have proven their identity uh, to someone else and it's still, it's still uh, valid. So hopefully, Hopefully, every time or, or whenever you connect to the internet, just have a quick look as to what the certificate actually looks like and whether it's, it's green. The days of HTTP, does anybody know an HTTP site? Well, oh, name and shame here. Anybody know a HTTP site? Any? We'll try. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll try. We'll try, we'll try this one. I don't know what this one is, but we'll see if this one works. Uh, maybe it's not actually working. So Google said, that's it. We're finished with HTTP. And why are you switching from HTTP to HTTP? Uh, there we go. Why are you switching from HTTP to HTTP? I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> Well, what's the problem? Well, I'll explain more uh, next week, but why do you have to do that? Why, when I pay my council tax, do I go to an HTTP site and then they flip me to a, a place when I make the payment? And that's, I want to know that I'm dealing with the right site in the first place. So just don't do HTTP anymore. It's not about security anymore. It's about me knowing I'm connecting to a government website. I could give you some shocking examples <laughs> of this, but I'll, I won't name and shame. Uh, but uh, here, this is, uh, this is Google that have caused this, uh, and they've now said they will not support. You will not appear high up on the rankings if you're still supporting HTTPS, and eventually you'll get dumped. Uh, Google will just not support. And what's the most popular browser on the internet? 
ago by how many, by roughly 80%, I think, is that right? Can somebody check that? Internet Explorer, who uses Internet Explorer here? Or Edge or whatever they call it? Anybody? No, no one. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> we fight against it. That was about 100% at one time. It's tiny. Google Chrome feeds the, the whole of the industry. So 67, it's maybe dropping a little bit. Edge is maybe coming back. They're still using the same uh, code. Was it? Is that right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and Edge is 5%. Yeah. That's shocking. It's on every, every Windows machine, and people, the first thing they do, it's the first thing I do is install Firefox. <laughs> uh, who uses Chrome? Mm. Firefox. Another one? Opera? Safari. Safari. Yeah, it's a good one. I've got them all because I need to test. <laughs> I've got them all. You see down the bottom here. They're all, they're all there. They're all there. <laughs> they're all there. Which one do you think I use most? Firefox. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll give it away there. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just use that one and uh, I quite like it. But Chrome is the one. If I'm doing any Bluetooth hacks or anything like that, I go to Chrome. I, I know Chrome has a good extensions in it. Firefox, I, I just like that. But both of them are really aging out and eventually you'll see a big yellow. Do you get, ever get that yellow box around a web page? I'll maybe try and find one for you. It means that it's the name. We'll do this next week. We'll use SSL Labs. The name on the certificate has got nothing to do with the site, for goodness sake. But developers go, yeah, what's the problem with that? <laughs> I tested that and it's fine. You go, well, this is a home care community and that's called Acme. Uh, look, give the user a break and show them that the site matches uh, what's on the certificate that has been uh, signed for. So next week in the lab, I'll give you some horrors, uh, but we will typically use uh, SSL uh, labs for our scanning. Of, uh, of sites. Hopefully that's going to come up with the right uh, site. So with SSL Labs, we'll assess the certificate and then uh, uh, companies get a, get a grading. So you should be, if you're, a, if you're working in this area, if your site is getting a C and D and E or an F or a T, then you're not doing something quite right. So you want to be in the A pluses if you can, or the A's. We'll have a look at, uh, at an F here. Hopefully we'll find, oh, there's one in France. A mail server gets a, a, an F, F uh, grading here. <coughs> it supports SSL too. Ah! <laughs> uh, it's vulnerable to Poodle. Its uh, certificate isn't trusted by Google. Uh, it supports all these older uh, certificates. Uh, and then, I mean, to support SSL2 is shocking for a mail server. We've, we've passed that and it should be switched off. There's virtually nothing. If you had Windows 1.0 running on a PC and it's unpatched, then fair enough, maybe SSL2. Every single device now at least supports TLS 1.0. So this, and we'll come back to this in more detail, but this site will assess all of the, the basic vulnerabilities. There you go, it still supports RC4, one of the encryption, scream encryption methods that, uh, that we covered. Okay, so it's ultra important uh, to really understand uh, uh, your, your uh, site. In this case, we're it doesn't even get any grade for its, uh, its certificates. Uh, I don't know if we can go to that one. Uh, there's obviously a problem on it. Oh, we'll get an authentication, but it looks like it's supporting HTTPS uh, uh, anyway. Okay, so it's a, it's a big worry. And the big worry is, is that uh, a lot of people, even in the industry, don't even understand 
what it is they're actually doing, especially developers. And you need to make sure that you, you are secure by design. <laughs> it's not an afterthought. It should be thought about at every single part of your, uh, uh, of your design uh, process. OK, so well, this is what we want. We want authentication of devices, of people, uh, and so on. <coughs> we want to keep confidentiality but we also want uh, integrity there. Uh, call it CIA or AAA or, or whatever you want. We need to make sure that it's not just confidentiality we're looking at. This is just important and integrity is, is just as important uh, in there. Okay, so how do we get the public key to Alice? Without Eve intercepting it, Eve pretending that she has Bob's public key how do we make sure that we can get that sent over and that Alice knows uh, Bob's uh, public key? So how can we make sure that we can sign things and that Eve can't tamper uh, w with them? And how do we get our, our public key over to, uh, to Alice, even though Bob isn't online just now? Is there a way that we can make sure that when he's offline, she can still get access to uh, his public key. And who do both Bob and Alice trust? <laughs> On the internet, the answer is no one. <laughs> and that should always be the default. So who is it that they can both say that they trust in some way to make sure that either can prove uh, their identity to each other? So this is where we bring in the concept uh, of Trent. Okay, so what we want to do is to prove us. We want to prove our devices. Uh, we want to prove our servers and our systems. And actually, we want to prove data. So everything is wrapped up into this trustworthiness. One bit of data, a whole lot of data. I'm going to sign for it. My signature matters because I sign to say that this is me or I prove that uh, I know uh, this, this, this entity. So when it comes to authentication, we can have what's called end-to-end -end authentication. Like with WhatsApp, we have a tunneled encryption from end-to-end. From -end. Or we can have what's called intermediate authentication. So in this case, we're authenticating this device to the server. What some of the methods that we could use to identify my device to uh, a, a server. So if I had my mobile phone here, <coughs> how could I authenticate that phone? An IP address? Is that, can that be faked? Yeah, of course it can. What else? A MAC address? My fingerprint, my face, well, not quite that. But we find a way to authenticate the device to the, to the service. There is some way that we pass details that authenticates it. And typically that might be a digital certificate that it proves that it has a private key on there. And the other one is that we authenticate the user, such as biometrics, to the service in the end. Which one is better? End to end. Why? Why? <laughs> Was that? It could be accepted. Intercepted. Kind of. Uh, so the the biggest weakness is that I although I authenticate that somebody's stolen my device. So they can pretend to be me. And someone can get in here and in here. What's the standard thing that gets in there? A proxy. Somebody sticks a proxy on the machine and everything that goes here goes through the proxy and then uh, it can be taken. So we can have intermediates uh, going on. Maybe a router uh, authenticates itself to another router. That's a good thing. But then uh, for the data itself, it's the user to the service. And as, as much as possible, we want to be integrating uh, 
biometrics and get rid of passwords as we've actually seen. So the ways we can do that is that one-way authentication, the server proves itself to the user, passes a certificate. This is what we see with uh, Google and the web. <coughs> the user never has to authenticate themselves, identify themselves roughly, unless they maybe log in with a username and password. We can have a client authentication that's used in Ape TLS. You put a certificate on your machine with a private key and every time you connect, if you're in a highly secure network, you'll find that you can't do that username and password for EduRoam. You find that there's got to be a private key on your device to be able to authenticate onto the access point. But the best one is mutual authentication. We pass our identity either way and we make sure that we prove to the service and the service proves to us and that's um, mutual authentication. Okay, so some of the ways that we can authenticate ourselves, biometrics of course, uh, <coughs> passphrases, tokens, certificates and so on. For the device we might use the MAC address or the IP address. I still see lots of uh, Cisco configurations that are based on the name <laughs> of the device or something quite, quite simple. If possible, you should be using a, a, a certificate to, to prove uh, 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 devices. <coughs> okay, so we typically talk about the three uh, factors of uh, authentication. Something you have, something you know, and something you are. There's another one that I've not included. Do you know what the other one is? And it's used for most fraud detection. Geolocation. Geolocation. It's somewhere you are. So that's the check that is passed from your phone when you're using your bank. If you're now in Moscow and you were in Edinburgh 10 minutes ago, <coughs> oh, that rings a that rings alarm bell. So somewhere you are is the thub. What you shouldn't do here is pick, 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 pick from one group. Pick, pick, pick. You should be spanning your multi-factor authentication across two, three, or four, <laughs> okay? Multi-factor, which is always based on your date of birth or your first school, and keeping asking those questions is just silly. <laughs> Someone who knows you probably knows all those answers. So multi-factor authentication is picking two. So username, password, mother's maiden name. Give me another one. Something you know? Pin code. Pin code is a good one, yeah. For school, I've said. Other ones you typically asked for banking things? I never, I never, I always get, I always put them in wrong. Don't know about you. I put the answer in wrong. <laughs> and so I, I can never get it back because I think it's just stupid. <laughs> Anybody can find it from my Wikipedia page or something like that. Oh, it's <laughs> Any other ones? Something you know that you've been asked Favourite about? Author. What is it? Favourite author. You've been asked, what is it? Yeah, favourite author. Oh, you're joking. George Orwell was mine. Anybody agree with that one? No. What's your favourite author? You're not going to tell me, are you? <laughs> is it sci fi? Give me a hint. <laughs> Give me a hint. <laughs> oh, God, that's not much of it. Is it George Orwell? No, no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, uh, name of your first pet. Uh, mother's maiden name, you go. <laughs> I mean, in a world of the internet, uh, you go, I don't remember things anymore, for goodness sake. Okay, something you have, smart card, digital certificate, network adapter. Can you think of something else? That you, what is it? A uh, what, sorry? ODP. ODP? One time password. Something you have. Oh, with, the, with an RSA token or, or some. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah, so that's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I've not included that yet. And another one? <coughs> Something you have? Your phone. <laughs> there you go. That's the best authentication thing that you'll ever get. Uh, don't lose that. Uh, so, yeah, the one time password thing, you're right. If you link that with your phone and an SMS message, to that phone, that links it to something you have as a telephone number 
and a connection to the network. Uh, that's really good, thanks. And then, something you are, okay, increasingly, uh, we're using facial recognition, uh, uh, fingerprints, palm prints. Uh, out of all the biometric methods, who prefers face recognition? One, do you have an Apple device? Oh, good for you. But you prefer face. You prefer to, oh. yeah. Like when you come out of the shower and they're just, come on. <laughs> uh, who prefers fingerprints? Oh, yeah, that's right. Prefer. Most of us. Handprints? I can't use fingerprints. No. If I go in the shower. Yeah, I know. You should take your mobile phone in the shower. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, no, this is bad. And in healthcare, don't implement <laughs> fingerprint recognition for doctors and clinicians and so on, or in a, in a ward uh, to get into a ward. That's not a good. That's not a good place to be. Uh, uh, iris scanner. Does anybody? Is it, everybody's tried that, haven't they? And everybody's. You've not tried it because you don't. You don't like it. Why do you not like it? Did you write? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they say all biometrics are weak in that way, yeah. but I think that one yeah. has been taught by yeah. recently has not yeah. been weak in that way. Do you know how they, they, they get around this? How the mobile phone companies get around this? Uh, so they have... Blood vessels. Blood vessels. I'll come back onto that. Yeah. So the, 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 your phone has infrared. Uh, your, your face detection is firing. I can see it now little red dots <laughs> all over your face in infrared, you can't see it. So they detect the temperature of your face. So if you do like a mask, what the adversaries have got to do is heat it up. <laughs> they heat it up in certain areas to make it look like it's warm, <laughs> actually. So they could do that with the eye. So who likes iris scanners? You kind of try it and you're on the bus and you're going, I want to get on the bus. <laughs> I want to get on the bus. So that's my iris scanner, uh, sir. Uh, can you just let me on the bus? I just <laughs> my, can somebody hold my eye open? It's, it's not a good look. You know, one of the most reliable is a retina scanner. I ever went for an eye test. Uh, it's wonderful. Ask them to get your beautiful... Uh, scan of your eye. Have you ever seen it? It's just, it's like, it's like a planet. <laughs> that's my, that's my eye. And there's a little black thing. What is the black thing? This is okay. That's, that's okay. And the vein pattern. Uh, don't ever let anybody get a, pa a picture of your eye, actually. So try and get the photograph back. But the <laughs> pattern of the veins in, on the back of your eye are very distinctive and never change over time. And the problem with facial recognition is that you, like it or not, we're all going to get old. <laughs> and we get wrinkly and, and so on. We have haircuts and we have grow beards and all that kind of thing. Uh, the retina doesn't, doesn't scale, uh, scan that much. But people don't like it. Why don't people like it? Because it looks into your soul. <laughs> <laughs> There's something, if I went up to an ATM, there's something not quite right about the ATM having a look in my eye. You go, well, what have you been doing? <laughs> Nothing. I just want money. What do you want money for? <laughs> I can see you want to buy a car. So there's that, there's that thought. There's something about looking into your eye. And obviously, they're shining infrared, so it could damage your eye. Uh, so uh, there's no evidence yet for that. But obviously, when you go up to something and it will scan, you've got to be quite near it uh, too. Retina is one of the best. If you're in a highly secure environment, I highly recommend that you use uh, a retina scanner uh, for that one. This one here is really good because I don't actually have to touch anything. Has anybody been to like a company uh, that has that in there? No. Uh, well, it was used, used to use quite a lot and, and were quite distinctive. You could see everyone's hand and have a distinctive pattern <coughs> on there. But it's not to stop somebody taking a photocopy of your hand. 
and sticking it up uh, in front of it. Uh, so please, please watch uh, for, for that. Okay, but facial recognition has taken off a lot, uh, but you've got to worry about how it's actually being uh, used. Okay, so we need a method to be able to get the public key uh, to, uh, to Alice. Okay, this is what it looks, a certificate kind of looks like from a human uh, point of view. So we obviously we need a way to be able to show them. So we'll typically see the high level. <coughs> when we click on a cert, we'll see the basic details, who it's issued to, who issued it, and then when it's valid, okay? Something that's out of its time should probably not be trusted uh, anymore. And then if we look at the certificate itself, we see, of course, the public key. This is RSA 2K. There's the key uh, in there. And uh, then we can look at the thumbprint here. And the thumbprint here is in SHA-1. We take the SHA-1 and we sign it with the, what key do you think? See if you can get this one right before I tell you the answer. We take the hash of the, the, the certificate and we encrypt that with what key? I'll come back onto it, but it's the private key of the issuer. Okay, whoever issued it will sign that hash and only they will have that private key and be able to uh, 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 sign the, the certificate. But as we've seen <coughs> with uh, SHA-1, you cannot trust a SHA-1 uh, signed certificate anymore, but nobody has them anymore, so it's actually okay, <laughs> they're, they're gone. But if you see a SHA-1 signed uh, certificate, then be uh, worried. And an important element is the issuer, because they're the one that's verifying the entity of the, the, the certificate, okay? So you will have to have some trust relationship with the issuer. If you don't trust the issuer, you don't trust VeriSign, then, then you don't trust this uh, certificate. So the two certificates that we have is that when we create our key pair, we have a certificate that has both. Do not ever, ever, ever <laughs> release that because that has both the public and the private key on it. You will receive a key pair or you'll generate your key pair. You then store that on a USB stick. Because <laughs> if you lose this private key, you are, <coughs> it's not going to be good. So if this, is your, if this is your certificate to encrypt your BitLocker Microsoft uh, machine, if you lose that certificate, no one will get access to the files because they can't be decrypted uh, anymore. So what you'd often do is, is take a copy of that, put it on a USB stick, put it in a fire safe, and uh, everything's fine. Or you would keep it somewhere trusted on the network and that nobody could get access to it unless they had multi-factor authentication and so on. <coughs> you then export that to create something with a public key. Okay, so watch for this little key here. Uh, that should not be uh, released uh, <coughs> anywhere. Okay, so a typical format is the PB7 format, B64. Hopefully you're getting used to seeing things like this. You'll get sent this as an email, as a text, uh, or something like that. You'll copy and paste <coughs> it into your certificate infrastructure. So this is with Windows. I take my certificate. I can then uh, save it as a PB7, P7B format, and then I import it. It appears in my certificate store. These are my personal certificates. And then when I view it, I can see this is for Bob, issued by Bob, self-signed certificate, <laughs> alarm bells, uh, and th th I can actually view it uh, there. If you're on a Mac, uh, there's, slightly, there's a different way of, of viewing your, your key store uh, from there. So the basic formats that we have is that if we have a text format, it's P7B. If you have a binary format, it's a PFX file. With, a, with this format, you can have a password on it. So although it's stored in a, 
<coughs> in a file, it has a password. So never store your public and private key certificate without a password. So to open up the, the certificate, you need a password. But a lot of people will just put QWERTY or a very simple password because they know how important the certificate is and they don't want to get uh, lock, locked out uh, uh, off it. Okay, so this is the basic process that we go through. So uh, uh, if we send uh, uh, something to Alice, we'll take Alice's public key, we'll encrypt the message with her public key, and then we'll use Alice's private key to then uh, decrypt it. If we now want to include signing, then <laughs> to encrypt, we take uh, the public key from the certificate that Alice provides. We then encrypt the message. We now take the hash of the message and take Bob's private key, hash it, and send the encrypted hash. It's called a, a signature, uh, along with the encrypted message. Alice uses a private key to decrypt the message, and we get that back. She then takes the hash, takes a hash of it. Uh, Bob sends his public key through his certificate, and then uh, she is able to decrypt the, the signed hash that, uh, that he created. I'll take you through step by step of that uh, in, in a little minute. Okay, so when we look at our certificates, uh, we'll typically see something uh, like this. So if I pull up uh, this site here, okay, so there's my certificate here. Uh, we can view our certificate. It's signed by, uh, let's encrypt there. <coughs> and uh, so we can see the basic uh, details of this. Uh, we'll go come back on to this next week about what that really means for the connection. But when we view the certificate, there's some uh, good information. Okay, so I use Let's Encrypt as my certificate signer. That's then uh, signed by a root uh, here who allows Let's Encrypt to, to sign uh, certificates. So it should have all the details. So I'm using the RSA, a 3K, 3K key. Uh, there's our exponent that we should all be used to now. That's the E uh, key in there. It's signed by SHA-256 with RSA. So uh, Let's Encrypt will take the private key, take a hash, a SHA-256 of the certificate and encrypt that and then we'll be able to prove it with their public key. Okay, there's the fingerprint in there, and SHA-1, just in case you want it, and there's all the details in, in there. So if we want, we can export it to a PEM uh, format, and that will have uh, the, key, uh, the key actually in it. So I think I've got an example here of uh, this. So I've exported Google's PEM, and that's what it looks like. <coughs> that's a PEM format. When I export here, uh, it will only obviously have the public key in it. I can now create a, a certificate uh, if, if, I, if I want from, from that. Okay, so that's, uh, that provides us with that. Okay, so how does it work? How does it work? Well, uh, what we do is that uh, we generate uh, a key pair, uh, just as we've done in the lab. We use OpenSSL uh, and we'll generate uh, a, a, an RSA key pair, 2K key pair. We then use what's called a, 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 a code signing request, certificate signing request, CSR. So open it, uh, OpenSSL, uh, now creates that key and creates this file, which we then send to our trust provider. So this could be Let's Encrypt or it could be VeriSign or something like that. So they now have your, your keys, the keys that need to be signed for. So they should check your identity and make sure, so you maybe send your, your driver license or something, your passport and so on. And then they create a certificate, again, using OpenSSL with an X509 uh, uh, standard. 
So then that uses their own key. So this is VeriSign here, say, and they create their own signing uh, certificate. It is that key which is then used to be able to sign uh, the certificate. So they're using their private key to be able to sign a certificate. What we get back <laughs> is, is the certificate in the end, uh, as we'll see something like the B64 format will be emailed back uh, to us. Luckily, uh, these days, Let's Encrypt does all this for you and you don't have to go through this necessarily. So Let's Encrypt have a viewpoint that this should all be free. And it's taken them a while because obviously malware writers and all that adversaries are using Let's Encrypt certificates. So there is a feeling that if it's got a Let's Encrypt certificate, it's not quite as trusted as VeriSign and so on. But they're getting over it now and they're more trustworthy. So there is a route to the certificates up to the top, but they can then sign uh, certificates from there. So they now are trusted to sign at that root level. Some of the formats that we get, so that's what a PM format looks like. You can also get this other one, PKCS7. And these are B64 uh, certificates. We can also convert them into a binary format that would appear on your computer. So there and ser are there. And we can use these commands here for that to, to actually happen. If you see, they're all in X509 format, and we might get it as a PEM, a DER, or as a PKCS7 uh, uh, file. You'll see PKCS standards all around the place. Uh, that's like the crypto messages that we see in the lab. That's that, that certificate request uh, standard. And if you want to put padding in RSA, there is another one uh, for that. Okay, so how does this actually work? Well, there's a route of the internet, and in these are certificate authorities that uh, can sign for anything that they want. So in this case, uh, the private key is installed or hardwired into Alice's computer. Uh, the public key, sorry, is installed into her computer. Whenever you buy a computer, the public keys are stored uh, in, in there. So uh, Bob wants a certificate, he goes to uh, Trent, Trent will sign the certificate, Alice gets that, she then checks the public key of the signer to make sure that it's a valid uh, cer certificate. Unfortunately, what can happen is that Eve says, I'm Bob. So you try to get a certificate, you could get Bill Buchanan, William Buchanan, Billy Buchanan, <laughs> and you'll probably get them all uh, for that. So Eve tricks to say, I'm Bob, and she gets a certificate, and everything is, is, is fine uh, for, for that. So the levels that we have is we have trust, trusted routes at the top, and then we have what are called intermediate signers. So these signers can sign for just certain things, like Microsoft could sign for uh, DLLs, uh, Cisco could sign for VPN uh, traffic. They're only trusted to sign certain things and they can't sign uh, other things. And then there's the worst one of all, never, ever, ever trust this one. This is a self-signed uh, certificate uh, and that Bob is saying that he's uh, Bob and there's no trustworthiness uh, in, in them. So what we'll do is we'll have a break for five minutes and then we'll do fake or not. <laughs> We'll see if you can spot a fake certificate. Thank you. Right, okay. So if the finest brains in cybersecurity in the world struggle to identify whether a certificate is fake or not, then you've got to worry about the rest of the, about the, rest of the world. So I'm going to give you a few certificates here. I appreciate they're all timed out, uh, but just assume that they're not timed out and see if you can see if they're fake uh, or, or not, okay? First one, fake or not. I know it's a bit difficult to see the screen from there. Is that a f 
Not fake. Why is it not? It's signed by Verisign, and we trust Verisign, we hope. Okay, yeah, so if we go up to the top level, we'll see there's a root signer, and there's an intermediate signer, and everything is good. If there's no root, then it's bad. Okay, fake or not? Fake, why is it fake? Self-signed, Self okay. We have issued by e-commerce, Amazon e-commerce, and... Uh, <coughs> Uh, issued to Amazon e-commerce. So what you'll get on your machine is that it'll say, do you want to install this as a root? And you should run a million miles from this. No, 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 no. The big, there should be a big no. <laughs> a tiny little yes. <laughs> I'm so silly that I want to install a, a, a root certificate on, on my machine. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try and bring along a few that, that I've installed on my machine uh, but uh, you should never do this. So there's no root. <laughs> Once you do that in your trusted root authorities, you now have that certificate in there. And then often you'll find that it, it could be signed for a long time into the future. Apple is now reducing the time to one year. Okay, You'll not be able to get a certificate more than a year from Apple uh, because they, they have such a short shorter time uh, on it. Fake or real? <laughs> Fake or real? Global science sounds a strange, <laughs> mega, massive. <laughs> Is it fake or real? It's, it's real. What's the worry? The worry is the star, oh, for goodness sake, I'm connecting to the email server or Moodle or something like that. Give me a help here. <laughs> You're just saying, ah, oh, yes, it's all Napier, it's okay. So worry about wildcards because it's a sloppy way of doing it. You should have a certificate for every service uh, and <laughs> Microsoft, did anyone hear about the Microsoft one? Somebody forgot to update the Microsoft uh, certificate for Azure. <laughs> only Azure a few years ago, and the whole of the Azure cloud went, went down. I don't know how, how damaging. People will lose their lives because systems will fail. And it happened uh, with uh, Teams. Teams went offline a couple of weeks ago because somebody had forgotten. That's Microsoft. <laughs> if Microsoft can do that, then be worried uh, because uh, <laughs> people are, are a bit less savvy than Microsoft. Okay, so it's signed by Global Sign, and I think they are a they are a, a good uh, root signer and an intermediate, so everything's fine in there. But don't let a, a root get into, into your machine. Okay, so I'm going to take you through this. So uh, I tell the story each year, and I think it's really important. But when I went down to London, so I've got a little demo that I show uh, for this whole process. And you get these from Ikea, downstairs in Ikea if you want to buy them maybe about 20 pounds or something like that. And I do this, this little demo and it's got the little tins and the tins all fit into each other. And I was down in London giving a demo to some really serious financial people. <laughs> and I got to Edinburgh Airport and they said right over here, uh, take what's in your bag out of your bag. And uh, so I had to take this tin out. And they said, uh, sir, could you take the lid off the tin, please? to the lid of the tin and say, sir, could you take whatever's in the tin out? And I go, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's another tin. <laughs> and I could see the cameras starting to move towards me and the people with the machine guns took a lock off. <laughs> <laughs> and sir, could you now, well, I was shaking now, could you now take, take the, 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 the lid off the tin? And I said, took, took the lid off the tin down. Could you now take what's in the, the tin out? And <laughs> everybody's watching. It's <laughs> another one. <laughs> and sir, could you now take what that in? People get really tetchy you now, and I just, like that. Oh! <laughs> and uh, in there was electrical tape, <laughs> And uh, I had to explain the whole of public key encryption and Bob and Alice, and I think they got so bored they said, just, just go. <laughs> Every single time, I think. I think when, when I go through security, they go, yeah, pull this professor over and get him to tell all about his tins. Okay, so I'm going to try and explain uh, what actually happens uh, here. 
So Bob and Alice, <coughs> Bob and Alice have their keys. So it's red, red and blue for uh, Alice, okay? And you can be Alice, I think, okay? So what we need to do is get Alice's public and private key, and then we have her key. It's there. She will then take her keys, and that's yours. So you want to hide one of them? Which one do you want to hide? <laughs> that's it. That's good. Just tuck it underneath your certificate. That's, that's like putting it under the mat. You ever put keys under the mat? <laughs> right then. So, so Alice, so Bob, Bob has a message. So Bob, you're going to be Bob? <laughs> oh no, Bob. It's got to be Bob here. <laughs> What's the pen? What's the pen? What's the pen? What's the pen? Okay, good. So Bob, Bob's got uh, that. So Bob's going to take a, a message for uh, Alice. Uh, don't show anybody. Show the message. <laughs> so, the number of characters in that message is how many characters? <laughs> six. six. <laughs> I'll tell you it's six, okay? There's six characters uh, in, in, in that message. So what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to take uh, the number uh, six, okay? You're not meant to see that. I can see the message, you can't. And I'm going to encrypt that with which key? <laughs> okay, this is going to be my signature. Right then, which key will we use? What, what do you think? No. <laughs> what? Alice Private. Alice Private, why? I don't know. <laughs> It's the only option. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. And I th what, what's your what's your private key color? Blue. blue. Yeah, yeah. Is it blue? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any blue, so we'll call it green. <laughs> and there. Okay. So I'm going to put sticky tape on there. I'm going to make that green. Okay. I'm now going to take Bob's message that you can't see. I'm going to put that along with there, and then I'm going to put it in the next uh, tin. In fact, what I'm going to do, you can also get these from Ikea, okay? <laughs> I'm going to put these in here, okay? I think that works, yeah. And then I'm going to take the message that I've got here. I'll put it back in there. I've lost the message now. <laughs> put that in there. In fact, I'll just do it by tin, so. <laughs> okay, we'll put that in there, and imagine there was a, there was a lid on this one. <laughs> Now, which key am I going to use? So I've got Bob's message in here, which I've actually lost. <laughs> I've lost your message. See, it's like Paul Daniels here, this. <laughs> it's in here. You have to watch this back again, because it, uh, it'll make sense. Okay, so we've got Bob's message in there. We've got a signed version of that. Which key will, we, will Bob use? What? Alice's, who said Alice's public? Yeah, and do you think that's right? I'm, I'm approaching Alice. What? Well, speak. <laughs> Alice's public key. Go on, be confident. Okay, touch that on the top there. That's out. <laughs> so have to be so, so rough. I mean, it's, it's only a message, okay. So just imagine there was a top on this. <laughs> that, uh, it's in my office just now, I promise. Or it's maybe in the airport, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to encrypt that now with uh, Alice's, uh, Alice's public key. <coughs> and then what we're going to do is that we're going to encapsulate that. And imagine there was another <laughs> lid on top of that, okay? So we're now going to send that over to uh, Alice. Okay, there you go. So take the tin out that's got the... That should have a, that should have a, top on it, but it hasn't. <laughs> You've encrypted it too much. <laughs> okay, so we now have that little box. What what key will Alice now use to decrypt that? Oh. Who, sorry, what did you say? If there's one thing you wouldn't do, <laughs> can everybody see the flaw in what you just said? Why would you not use Bob's private key? <laughs> Why would Bob not give Alice 
because you're kind of stuffed. So that, that's the definite wrong answer. And the right answer was Alice's private, Alice's private key. So take your private key, touch the top of, no, that's your public key. It's the blue one. <laughs> the blue one, touch the top, okay. And that opens it, so you can take that off. Imagine there's a lid there, and we take that out. And you can read the message, and the message says, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> read the message that Bob sent in there, in the box. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. It's in there. <laughs> and by the magic, we'll see if this works, okay? No smoke and mirrors. What's the message? Yeah, yeah. Was that the message? Oh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we've got this other box. So which key will Alice use to open that box? Okay, show everybody the box. No, no, not the two boxes. Just the one there, that one. And show the color. Which key will she now use? Bob's public key, okay. Did I not give you your keys? <laughs> okay. So Bob's public key. There we go. Uh, I've done this wrong, haven't I? <laughs> that should have been yellow. Okay. Okay, that should have been yellow. And he uses his public key to open it. So open up. <laughs> Can we go through that all again? And this time we'll get it right. Oh, oh it's, it's difficult to open. Oh, sorry about that. And it says six. Is that the number of characters in your... Oh, isn't that amazing? There you go. <laughs> okay, so that, that's basically what happened. So I'm going to talk you through this. Uh, so uh, Bob, Bob needs Alice's public key. She sends through our certificate. Our certificate has our public key only for it. it has a, it's signed by a certain entity. And that's fine. So then he takes uh, a message and a signature. He then encrypts the signature with his private key. Should have been yellow there. And then what key will he use now? He'll use Alice's public key to encrypt the whole box. Okay, get sent over. And then she opens up with what key? Bob's. Oh, Bob. Bob. Bob's. <laughs> Bob's. It's red. Look, it's red. Gives you a clue. Bob's. That's it. That's it. Yeah, well done. Okay, so she uses a private key. She opens up, reads the message. And then what key will she now need? Bob's public key. Bob's public key gets sent over with his certificate. Okay, that's there. <coughs> and then she can decrypt that and she'll check the hash to see if they're the same. Okay, so we went over something like this when we looked at uh, PGP encryption. There's the hashing encrypted message. We then use uh, Alice's public key to encrypt that whole lot there. We get send it over, she decrypts with a private key, we then take that off, she decrypts with Bob's public key from his cert, and then checks the hash uh, in there. And that's it, okay? So you need a little bit of reading up, I think, but you'll get there, honestly. Just remember never to give your private key away <laughs> to anybody. So that's not the right answer. So let's uh, do our little test and see how Bob gets on this week. So, are you ready, Bob? Are you confident? <laughs> okay, so please, if there's any answers that I've got here, I don't check them that much. So please excuse me if I get any of them uh, wrong. You can check them uh, af after it after the, <coughs> the lecture, hopefully. Okay, so are you connected, Bob? Good. Are you confident, this one? Confident, fairly, fairly confident. Should be fine. We're all connected, all ready to go. It's Bob against the rest of us, okay? 
Right then, here we go. <coughs> okay, so pick your, pick your pseudonyms. <coughs> a penguin. You're the penguin. <laughs> That's cool. The Santa Claus one is a wee bit out of date, I think. But maybe it's for next year. Maybe Christmas starts early for some people. <laughs> okay, I want to be that one there. Who's that one? That's a cool one. Oh, wow, that's a cool one. That's, I want to be like that. In crypto land, sometimes you feel a bit like a, like a robot. Right then. Okay, it's not a good start. Oh, oh right, sorry, I've got to start the quiz. Hopefully that's going to be okay. <coughs> okay, what's a typical RSA key size for digital certificates? I know there's a wee bit of debate in this. 128, 256, 512, 1K, 2K, 4K. I'll show this in a bit more detail and we'll do a survey of all the internet and to see what size of keys most companies have. And the answer is 2K keys. 2K. RSA is always going to be twice as big. We start RSA here. That's hackable. We need to start at least here. That's nearly hackable. That's not hackable. That's definitely not hackable. Uh, 2K RSA keys is where you want to be. <coughs> okay, did you get that one, Bob? Oh, no. What did you, what did you have? Okay. Oh, we've got a new leader. Who's, who's that? Oh, Dan. Just, and, uh, oh, we only got, uh, oh, we've got, got a few zeros there. <laughs> Everybody else got zero. So, okay. So RSA 2K, 2K keys. Remember that one. Which is not a base 64 format for a digital certificate? There, PKCS7. PB7B or PEM? <coughs> we'll, do, we'll do it in the lab, so don't worry. You'll be able to see that. And six people were listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> there. PEM, PB7B, and PKC7 there are, are, are base64 formats. There is binary. Oh, Taylor Swift, good. <laughs> and it's quite good, the little, the little icon is kind of, it's like Taylor Swift and her clone. So that's good. Oh, Snowy Fox is way in the lead, so must have got those two right. <laughs> Bob, did you get that one? No, where are you, Bob? What position are you? 20 seconds. <laughs> How can you go from top to, to not be in the top 10? Go on, Bob. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, for, its, for a website for HTTPS, which keys are contained on the digital certificate? For HTTPS, the private key of the site, the public and private key of the site, the public key of the site, or the symmetric key of the site? <coughs> okay, so it's definitely not the private key of the site. If you ever get the private key of Google, give me a call, give me a call. <laughs> And we'll be on the first plane to wherever, because uh, that's worth a lot. So, so definitely not, uh, definitely not for the same reasons. <laughs> uh, public key of the site uh, and symmetric key. We're not in symmetric key land anymore. We're in public key land. We'll explain where symmetric key fits into this uh, next week. But it's all in public key of the site. Okay. So, <laughs> let's see how Bob got on that time. Did you get that one right, Bob? Where are you, Bob? You've disappeared. You got that one wrong too. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so it's still Snowy Fox, Scott, uh, Helen in there. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, oh, quick, quick. Here's another one. Which is not a digital certificate provider? GeoTrust, GoDaddy, Network Solutions, Thor, Very Signer, Trust Network. Oh my God, that's a horrible question. If you get that one right, I think you're doing pretty well, and it's a guess, probably. <laughs> they all sound rubbish, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, well done. Trust networks. 
I, I kind of half thought it was this one. <laughs> this is purely knowledge. If you said GeoTrust, be a bit worried. If you said GoDaddy, are you not watching the adverts on the TV? Uh, uh, GoDaddy is a cert uh, provider. Uh, oh, who said VeriSign? Uh, does anybody want to admit to that one? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, Thor is, is definitely a, a certificate uh, provider. So, Bob, did you get that one right? No, what are you doing, Bob? Go, Bob, Bob, come on. That's, uh, okay, so three, three people got that one right. Uh, the, other one, the other one was quite, I need to check the network solutions work. Oh, this is a walkover this week. <laughs> there's, there's such, there's such a, a gap. Normally it's, it's, uh, it's nip and tuck, but, uh, but we're uh, seeing there. Right then. Okay, I don't know <laughs> many more of these. I know these are horrible questions, but uh, just a bit of fun. Bob sends Alice an, uh, a message to Alice. Which key does he use to prove his identity? Okay, what well, fundamentally... What key is he using initially to be able to prove that he is Bob? What is the key he grabs first to make sure that Alice knows that he is Bob? <coughs> Bob grabs his private key for his signature. Okay. <laughs> uh, no? <laughs> Definitely not. And... Uh, Alice has got nothing to do with this, with his identity. It's his own, and is, he doesn't use his public key uh, initially to sign the message. He uses his private key. Surely Bob got that one? You got that one? You got that one? Yeah. You, you go right to the top for this one. We just hope Bob's going to be number one here. It's going to be so unbelievable. We did it in one nanosecond, and the way it calculates it, he gets a billion points or something like that. So let's see how Bob got on with that one. <laughs> oh, Bob, Bob, come on, Bob. You were the second fastest of... Uh... Oh, you're in seventh place. Uh, well done. Uh, Taylor Swift is doing very well, actually. Uh, and uh, top ten is looking good. So Snowy Fox still top, Snowy Fox, yeah, good. Scott, <laughs> good, well done. Uh, that's quite, it's still quite close. I think there's still possibilities. Uh, and, and yeah, come on, Bob. <laughs> uh, Bob has signed a message. Which key does Alice use to prove his identity? Is it Bob's public key, Bob's private key, Alice's public key, or Alice's private key? Which key is she going to use to prove Bob's identity? <coughs> it is Bob's public key. Well done. Definitely, 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 definitely not that one. Okay. Don't, whoever voted for that one, don't ever get Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> don't. Uh, give, me your, give me your wallet. Yeah, no problem. There's my wallet. Do whatever you want with it. Just okay. Private key, have it. Okay. Uh, so it's Bob's, Bob's public key. Do you want me to say it a hundred times? <laughs> Bob signs with his private key and Alice proves his identity with his public key. Alice has got nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> it, it's good. It's good. It makes you think. It makes you think, which is the main thing. That's why you're here, okay? <laughs> it's to think. Think deeply. Is that, is that the end? No. What happened there? Did something happen in between there that I just never saw? <laughs> okay, get ready. Come on, Bob. Uh, Trent has signed a certificate for Bob. Which key does Alice use to prove that Bob's certificate is valid? Which key does she use? Bob's public, Alice's private, Alice's public, Trent's private, or Trent's public key? I did say it. Kind of, it's a kind of important thing. Oh, well done. That's really impressive. That's really good. And I put it at the end. <laughs> and nobody went for the middle one, which is really good. Okay. <coughs> good. Bob, did you get that one? Oh, well done. So, 
we should have started from here, I think. You just were, were caught off a little bit. Uh, Helen did really well there, Bob. Uh, uh, still... Okay. Yeah, you did well in that one, but uh, I thought you would have went up. Uh, so Scott, Scott and Snowy Fox. And hey, and hey Arnold. <laughs> How would Eve trick Bob into installing a backdoor malware? Get him to install a root certificate and sign the software with it. Prompt him to install the software and accept any messages. Get him to install an intermediary signer and sign the software with that. Could be one or the other. Yeah, she'll get him to install a root cert and then send them some software that's been signed by that cert. The last, the one at the end would have been acceptable, but the scope of the hack would have been limited to only the signer of the intermediate. So the best one for the adversary is to get the root. And Snowy Fox wins. Well done. <laughs> and where were you, Bob? Where were you? Where, were you in the top ten? Is that you there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Six. Right, okay, it's only a bit of fun and it's meant to just probe you to think a bit more. You all definitely need to be thinking a bit more about that public key, private key. Once you get it, you go, hallelujah, and the people on the bus will go, sit down right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do all the time on the bus into the work. I go, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, shut up. And uh, once you get RSA, you'll just find that fantastic and then you'll lose it. <laughs> it happens to everybody, they kind of get it and then they'll lose it, but you'll get it back again before the test, uh, hopefully. Okay, well thanks very much, we'll have the lab uh, in a little while and uh, uh, make sure you kind of play back the lecture again. Thank you. Th this isn't in the first test, by the way, so it's fine. <laughs>